this movie is splitting people right down the middle and it's well it ain't down the middle there's a lot of people that hate this movie and I get it I uh, I found myself really into it for the first 50 minutes and as soon as Michael makes his appearance that's when I started like it started getting wishy-washy to me I think this movie would have been better if it wasn't a Halloween movie if that makes any sense at all I think uh, all right, let's dissect this a little bit. The story with Corey Cunningham is awesome. I love it. I love the character. I love what happens. I like how the back and forth with him and the kid he's babysitting at the beginning. How they're talking about Michael Myers, and he's like, "Yeah, he just killed babysitters," and you know that kind of messes with Corey a little. Like you see Corey take pause, like, "Oh yeah, right." Um, that's awesome. That's the mythos it should be. The, the prior movie where evil dies tonight and everybody's freaked out. I don't think Michael Myers was that big a deal. To, you know, if Halloween 2 had, had happened, then it, I understand that. Or even any of the other sequels. I understand that. But it just, it just wasn't warranted. But the idea that this guy killed babys was stalking babysitters, that would resonate with any babysitter, especially in Haddonfield, right? So... I like that dynamic. I, I, I almost jumped out of my seat when they were watching the thing. That was amazing. I love that. Uh, when the kid falls off the balcony, that w that was so startling to me. I was like, oh, I didn't expect that. And then that that's one of my one of my instant favorite movies is when kids are in jeopardy and when kids get killed. Sorry, I'm a proud father. I love my daughter, but. When a movie harms or kills a kid or animals, a dog, um, they're they're telling you they're pulling no punches, and I love that. Again, I love I love the character arc of Corey. Um, I just watched uh, Jason and his fiance on Sinister Cinema talk about it, and I agree that this character should have been it should have been in the last movie or both movies, prior movies. Or at least the last movie a little bit just to to build it because it, it it definitely the story is awesome it should have just been a little bit longer there should have been a, a like a slower arc to it and that being said I still I was totally into the movie it's like I I almost forgot it was a Halloween movie you know what I mean and then when Michael shows up that's what brings it down to me because how the fuck was he staying alive for four years in a, in a sewer he can barely move apparently he has no power. Corey's the one that kind of re-energizes him to do that. But then they ha they kind of have this bond and friendship which is going to throw a lot of people off. And I thought about that a lot because I thought it was stupid. But waking up, I watched it last night. When I woke up this morning, I was thinking about it. And I was like, well, why does, why does Michael latch on to Corey and is okay with Corey and doesn't try to kill Corey? Well, because Michael is insane. He's completely insane. The randomness of being crazy, that's, I'm going to attribute it to that. He just, for some reason, he likes this kid. This kid brought him a victim, right? <laughs> and that's, that, I know that's flimsy for a lot of people. That would let it be flimsy. But that, I mean, that's just how I describe it. It's much, the first Halloween, it was much more scary when it was just some random, it was a random crazy guy going home, just trying to get to his house, sees this girl and just latches onto her. No attachment, no no prior attachments. That's in that's crazy, and that's what happens in real life. Serial killers will see somebody and latch onto them, and that's just that. There's no rhyme or reason behind it, except in their brains. And that you know, crazy. You can't. What do you do with that? That's that's people that are insane, sociopaths, crazy. Michael's crazy, completely nuts, and I love it. Uh, I I. That being said, it's really corny that they b become Batman and Robin and go kill people. I I, I think that's silly. The uh, when the doctor and the nurse go back to the doctor's house, that whole scene set up, complete it's completely scream. It, to me, it was scream, scream vibes 100%. And I I love the kills in it. I love the kills. He was scary in that scarecrow mask. Oh man, well, that was scary. But then when you know, it would have been better if. It, I like how he's really clumsy too. Like she slams his hand in the door, and then he's he's trying to get in there. But with the modern day, it's, the cops would have been there already because she already had her cell phone, right? So that was that's where it's kind of like, yeah, I don't know, I don't know about this. But 
that being said, the scene was was good. If you if if that does if because it's gonna that scene's gonna take you out of the movie if you're a purist. Um, I was like that forever. It just seems like here in the last couple of years, I've just kind of that stuff's just kind of dropped off. Like I see a lot of movies that I like, like Hell, the new Hellraiser, for instance. I loved it. I loved it, and people are just trashing it and hating it. And, I'm, and instead of me getting defensive about it, like, oh, you don't have my opinion, I'm just kind of like, oh, oh well, you don't like it. Sorry, I mean, sorry for you. What's good about these movies like this, whether you love it or you hate it, all the horror fans are showing up and watching it. So regardless of, of what you think about the movie, if these movies are, are profitable, if these movies do well, you can almost guarantee that they're going to come out with more movies. There's going to be other movies, maybe not necessarily sequels or whatever, but they might be more inclined to say yes to a horror script because of, of it being so popular. Terrifier 2 is killing it right now, and that's amazing. And everybody, Stephen King mentioned it. I'm so happy for Damien because, I mean, what do you, that, that's Clap 9 shit right there, right? It's, there's none higher than Stephen King. So, it's just, I, that's, that's, that's what I've been thinking about. It's like, I wish people would just drop it. If you don't like it, you don't like it. If you're passionate about not liking it, be passionate about not liking it. But don't diss on somebody that had fun with it. That's ridiculous. That's kind of ridiculous, you know what I mean? Uh, Anyway, when you we get into the story, like I said, the Corey the Corey Cunningham thing is kind of rushed. I felt like the, his first kill was he didn't seem as upset about it as I think he would have been. Although I I don't know, he's pretty traumatized by by accidentally killing that kid, right? And then the town shunning him and him getting treated like shit. I mean, he's getting picked on little high school kids. He should have beat the shit out of them kids. That kid, he sh he was bigger than that kid. I would have cracked that guy right in the face. There's just no way that would have happened. No, 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 no. But he's a timid guy. Yeah, oh, man. Where, what am I thinking here? I, I don't know that... The kill did seem like an accident. Now that I'm thinking about it, it did seem like an accident. And... But then once he did that, I guess I guess that's how it. Maybe that's how it is in real life. When when sociopaths finally cross that line and take somebody's life, it's easier each time afterwards. Um, and he wasn't crafty about it. He wasn't, you know, he wasn't like stealthy and stuff. He, you know, he was very clumsy, which is what one of the things I liked about the Scream movies. Uh, the, especially in the first movie, Stu and uh, Billy were clumsy and they fell and got hit and knocked down all the time. So that was really cool about that. Uh, yeah, I like how the how the story progressed. I thought the Allison character was she was a little bit of a, a horn dog. I mean, she was she liked him a lot, and I don't know what she was seeing in him other than him being a misfit. Like she felt she was a misfit, although she was kind of a hero, where he was kind of a you know people shunned him for what happened although when you see what happens you clearly understand how it happened why it happened that kid he was babysitting was a little shithead and um, didn't deserve to die by any means but you he really he got railroaded when it really he really didn't mean to do that he just was freaking out the movie you know it kind of goes kind of goes it gets a little wishy-washy with with uh cory and michael myers teaming up and doing that kind of stuff uh the dialogue the the scene where where Lori is in in that house when Corey wakes up, I really like that dialogue, and it really creeped me out. It was like, do you want to do it or should I? It's like, is he ta is Michael upstairs? Is he talking to Michael? Th that was kind of cool. And then she's like, when he has his head turned, she splits. I like that. And then the end scene, the end scene with with Corey and Lori, and then Michael. I love that. I love how he he, he came in there. You know, he goes around killing all the people that wronged him. His mom, what a piece of shit was his mom. I couldn't stand his mom. Ugh. Ah. I hated her. I, that's one of those things where, like, you can't wait for that one, that character to go, right? And then, you know, he goes to the DJ. DJ, and that's that, that's that girl. I can't think of her name, but she's with Joe Bob Briggs, right? Oh, man. What a, what a stunner she is. That was, I like I liked that death. I like how the, he cut, <laughs> he snipped the tongue off. And then the... the the record was playing it kept skipping over the tongue it made me think about when me and my brother were younger he would throw his kiss records on and sometimes they would stick 
You know, it's gonna be a rock and roll party, rock and roll party, rock and roll party, smack. <laughs> if you're if you're a kid from the 70s and 80s, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You try to put a quarter on the on the needle so it wouldn't skip or it wouldn't stick. Uh, the, the, even though, like I said, the the team, yeah, I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Um, but the end fight was really cool. I thought it was really done well. I like how Michael's kind of Michael is kind of isn't very powerful. It doesn't seem like he's powerful. He starts getting his mojo back, but he's still kind of like out of it. And then when Corey takes his mask, he's like he's kind of out of it. And the end scene where him and Lori have their fight, I really like that. It's almost like if you're if you're a if you're a Halloween purist, I mean somebody's got to do a fan edit where they put these three movies together and cut out all the fat, all the evil dies tonight, and maybe even cut out all the Corey stuff for for like a fan cut of of just this Michael Myers trilogy cuz the the best part of the Michael stuff in this one is the end fight with Lori now how you would tie that together um I don't know I don't know how you would do that but they I really liked how the end of it the the fight I like how she crucified him and all that stuff after that where they parade him through the town that was kind of wonky and throw him in the grinder that was wonky too but uh, I lo- I, I'm, I'm realizing that I really like this movie. I'm going to watch it again. I know a lot of people are gonna, people hate it. Or they're not going to like it because they just want to see Michael stalking. And there's a bunch of movies you can watch that are already out of him doing that exact thing. But I, I think it's great that people love it, people hate it, and there's a big buzz about it regardless. So my advice to you is to go in with a clear head. Oh, if you haven't seen this, I just spoiled the hell out of it, didn't I? Well, there, it'll say spoiler in the title so hopefully you've already watched it but my advice to anybody that hasn't seen it is just go in there with a go in there with a clear mind listen to what christopher nelson says shut up and eat your popcorn and try to have fun with it if you if you're a debbie downer you're gonna hate this movie that's all there is to it so see you next time wait how can i forget the cameo with nick castle see anything you like